Hello everyone, this is George Diaz, President and Founder of Larry Jacob Internet Marketing, and I'm bringing you another episode of Defining Infusionsoft Success. This episode is a continuation of an interview I started with Robert Vico in the last episode. Uh, we're going to just uh, go right to it and continue where we left off. Cool. Okay, so now we're going from uh, to 10, 11, and 12, right? Yeah, so now we're going into what, what they're going to learn. We're reiterating from the beginning. In the beginning, we reinforced why they were there. We reinforced why they should stick around to the end of the webinar, what they're going to learn. Now we're going to jump into that. And these next slide, 11, 12, and 13, this is no different than what Russell Brunson is teaching in his perfect webinar funnel, where his perfect webinar funnel will talk about the three secrets you're going to reveal in that webinar, okay? This is no different. We're going to stick to three. I see a lot of people do webinars, and I guess, you know, they're going into it thinking, I want to over-deliver, content is king, and they'll do a webinar, and it'll be like the 21 things you need to know about this, right? It's too much. You're overloading them, and they're not going to take action on anything. So... What makes it very effective is to focus on three core things and just talk about that instead of trying to talk about 21 things and overwhelm the viewer or the attendee. And the three things you want them to be things that they can immediately take action on. Because if they watch your free webinar and they take action on one of these things and they get a result, oh, I guarantee you they're going to end up clicking the link and buying your product or service. So give them something that they can do right away that's going to generate them a quick, simple result. And that gets them excited. That gets the momentum going. So then we're going to jump into 14, which is now we're transitioning from what we've taught them, and now we need to transition to the part that makes most people uncomfortable, which is the close, which is asking for the sale. And you'll yeah. Let's make sure that you, you you get some water, you lubricate there. I don't want you to get all pruned up on me. Hydrate, not lubricate. Hydrate, hydrate. I guess. Uh, okay, so. We're going into the close, and this is where if, if you're like me and you've gone to a lot, of, and I know George goes to a lot of in-person live events, you can always tell when the guy up on the stage is a rookie or an amateur at this because when he transitions from the presentation to the close, to the offer, you'll see things start to happen. The energy level will drop, the body language will shift, the pacing up and down the stage will shift because they're just, they're just not comfortable asking for the sale. So if you follow these, these next few slides, it's just going to make this much more natural and a much easier transition for you to make that sale. And the reason you're hosting the webinar is because at the end of the webinar, you really want people to take the link and buy your product or service, right? Um, right. So we're going to start to transition into the close. We're going to, again, recap. One of the mistakes that a lot of people make is you can't assume that because they're on the webinar, they're paying attention, okay? It's a lot easier to get them to pay attention when they're in a live room. But it's very hard when they're on a webinar because they can be on the webinar and they can be typing, they can be taking notes on something, they can be reading a book, flipping through a magazine, they can be doing so many things. So you constantly need to reiterate and reiterate and reiterate what's happening, what they just learned, what they may have missed from not paying attention. And then after that recap, we're going to go into the solution part of problem that they solve, which is now we're going to present the solution to the problem that we've agitated or as George put to that scab that we've been picking at. Uh, and then one of the, the cool things that, that you do right away, and this is something that Ty Lopez does, and he, he does it at a, at a level that's almost like con man level, um, and that is the takeaway, okay? So what we call takeaway selling, it's basically, it's basically a move from, from a con man, because if you, if, you, if you pay attention to what a con artist does, and when you're in marketing and you love the psychology of marketing like I do, you tend to read books on con artists because you want to learn the psychology of how they were able to get a person to agree to something that you'd be like, what's wrong with this person? Why would they do this, right? So one of the ways that a, a, a con man does that is a con man will tell you, hey, George, I got this great opportunity for you, man, but you know, I don't know that you're ready for this. I don't know that you can handle it. You know, you never mind, never mind, right? What happens now is now you want to know. You want, we all want what we can't have, right? We all want to know something that nobody else knows. We all want that advantage. So now, we are going to make it an F, a point to get the con man to con us, right? And I use a, uh, a quick little story. Back in the 90s here in, in Miami, in South Beach, there was a very popular nightclub called Liquid. And my little sister would go to this nightclub every single weekend and not get in. And when I would talk to my sister, say, hey, Patty, what did you do this week? Oh, I went to Liquid. I was like, oh, great. Did you get in? No, I didn't get in. It's like, why do you keep going to that place every weekend? And her answer would be, because I want to get in so bad. Right? So it's 
same exact thing we're going to do with our product or service. We're going to present the problem. We're going to agitate the problem. And then we're going to dangle a solution in front of them, but we're going to pull it back. Okay? And one of the ways you do that, um, one of the ways that, that you can do that in a business to business in a product is, for example, the type of marketing courses and things and coaching for courses that I sell require effort. So I will say something like, you know what? This isn't for you if you don't have the time to dedicate to this. This isn't for you if you don't want to put the effort into growing your business. This isn't for you if you're looking for a quick fix, a get rich quick scheme, this isn't for you. So it, it, it brings the, 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 the prospects bar down a little bit because they feel you're being genuine, but then that little takeaway makes them want it. That little takeaway makes me think to myself, no, you know what, I, I, I can put in the time. No, I'm gonna put in the effort to do this. I, I, I'm gonna do this, right? So very powerful psychology behind that. Um, That's, by the way, that, the that, that is really interesting. And, and again, it can be done as a con, but, uh, but I agree with you because you have a lot of people, hey, look, if, this, if, if you're looking for one of these, you know, put two minutes a day and make, you know, $100,000 every week, you know, this isn't the solution for you, which kind of, look, let, let's get real. It takes work to, to become successful. Um, and, and, and you're just kind of stressing that, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. In an ethical, in an ethical way by being genuine, right? Now, you know, some of these marketers will do it in unethical ways, right? Because they'll play into your desires. And that's what really gets to me, man. I mean, you know, if I'm confident that I have a product or service that can benefit you, yes, I want to sell that to you. And I want to present it in a way that makes you want to buy it. But I don't want to present it in a way that makes you want to buy something that you don't need. And that I know in my heart and mind, this person doesn't need this, but I'm going to sell it to them anyway, right? That's where marketing can become unethical. Because at the end of the day, marketing is ethical manipulation. That's what marketing is doing. We're manipulating the psychology, we're manipulating the mindset of the prospect to get them to see the benefit of our product or service, right? And we can do that in an ethical way. And I, I, I don't agree with it. And, and, and I think that it's doing a big disservice. And, and, and I'm gonna go on a little bit of a tangent here real quick. And I think one of the biggest disservices it does, George, is it makes the entrepreneur like you and I, it makes us feel that we are not good enough. It makes us feel that we are not doing a good enough job. I've been a business owner 18 years running this current business, and then I do my coaching and consulting and other stuff. But uh, by the way, Robert, years, Robert, I, I've got yeah. people here in my office listening to this, and they're like going, you go, man. So, so you're not <laughs> seeing the feedback, but I've got people here hearing. And, uh, and, and this is good stuff. You're, you're right on. In 18 years, I don't have a Lamborghini. I don't have a mansion. I do, do not work four hours a week, right? But I'm out there doing it, and I'm, I'm, I'm making it happen, and I'm growing my business every single year. So the guy out there that's trying to build his business, that's been at it for a year, two years, and has only made $200,000, $300,000 in sales, that guy looks at what these markets are doing, and that guy gets down on himself. Yeah. And I said, go, man. Hey, if you got a business and you've made a hundred thousand, a million, a hundred thousand, even a thousand dollars, a hundred dollars. Pat yourself on the back because you've done something that 90% of people out there don't do, which is get off their ass, start a business, start a little side hustle and make some money. So if you're not making millions, don't knock yourself. All they're trying to do is manipulate you and play you. It's like back in the day in the 90s, there used to be this infomercial. This little Asian guy that was into real estate and he would get on the, on the front of this yacht and have all these women in bikinis and they would show a picture and the parking lot was full of Porsche and Ferraris and he would say, oh, you do can have all of this if you follow my real estate system. Bullshit, oh, doesn't work that way, man. Doesn't work that way. Uh, okay. And I think it's just, it's knocking the self-esteem, it's knocking the confidence out of these entrepreneurs. And I'm here to support them and encourage them and say, no, man, keep doing what you're doing. You made a thousand this month, next month you'll make 2,000, next month you'll make 3,000, and just keep going, forget the four hour work week, forget the four hours in the mansion, do your thing, man. <laughs> Number 20, the components of the product or service you are selling, and be sure to focus on the benefit of those components of, of your product or service. Right. This is another 101 direct response marketing mistake, which is you talk a lot about the features, but you don't talk about the benefits. And a lot of people don't understand what that means. And I have in my own little Robert Vico way of thinking of things, I have an easy analogy that explains to people. The feature is the seatbelt, right? Your car has a seatbelt, that's a feature. The benefit of the seatbelt means you're not gonna fly out the front window when you get into a car. So what you wanna sell is not the seatbelt, what you wanna sell is not flying out the window. It's a, 
an old saying that says, don't sell the steak, sell the sizzle. And right. I like to say, I like to say, don't sell the drill, sell a hole. Because at the end of the day, I don't need a drill, but I need is a hole in the wall. So sell me the hole in the wall, don't sell me the drill. So go beyond and sell them the benefit. And then when you get really, really good at this, and we're going to talk about this a little further down, is you're going to sell the benefit of the benefit. So the seatbelt is the feature. The benefit is not flying out the front window when I get in an accident. And the benefit of the benefit is I get to get live long enough to see my grandkids, right? So you kind of want to take it all the way to the benefit of the benefit. Number 21 is where we're going to present our price. And then number 22, another, another 101 direct response marketing mistake. I did a whole episode on this and I wrote an ebook about this, is not having a guarantee. Nothing takes away the buyer's objections. Nothing takes away their doubt and their hesitations by guaranteeing the product or service. And a lot, a lot of small business owners don't want to offer the guarantee because they're scared that people are going to take advantage. People are going to defraud them out of money. And it simply doesn't work that way. That, that's what we think in our mind. And part of that is probably because we're going outside of our comfort zone. Um, but at the end of the day, it doesn't work that way. And in the ebook, I even have a little scenario where we run through where let's say you offer the guarantee and X amount of people took advantage of that guarantee or, or took advantage of your of your guarantee and, and basically um, ripped you off. They, they got the part of insurance. No, right, right. So, you're, money back, right. so you're saying that your guarantee is, hey, you're going to get your full money back if you don't get the benefit plus more or something like that. And a lot of people are scared. It's like, oh my God, I'm going to be selling something for a hundred bucks. People are going to get my thing and then they're going to want their hundred dollars back, right? Right, right, right. And and, and uh, the guarantee doesn't have to be money back. There's many different ways. Uh, to right, do there's a, a lot of ways of doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have a, a, an ebook that has like 18 different ways that you can write a guarantee. But going back to that, right. So they think, oh, people are going to take advantage. They're going to have to refund people their $100. But when you do the math and you look at the case study and you look at the increase that having a guarantee brought you, that increase is usually going to offset any refunds you had to give and usually still be profit. So you might give two people refunds and be out the 200 bucks, but you may have sold six, seven, eight more people because you had a guarantee, right? So in the end, if the, the math is not going to, it's not going to work out the way that we think in our minds. No, no, right. And, and by the way, human nature isn't as bad as we think, despite what we see in the news, most people aren't going to be out there trying to get a buck off of you. Right, right. But, but we tend to think that that's what's going to happen. And I really believe that a lot of that is just because in my case, I'm trying to push these local brick and mortar business owners to doing something that they've never done by offering a guarantee. And it just, it, it, it pushes them so far out of their comfort zone that they start kind, kind of coming up with all the different reasons why they can't do this or, oh, guarantees don't work for my business or, you know, and that's like guarantees don't work for every business, right? An attorney cannot guarantee you that you're going to be found not guilty, but an attorney can guarantee you that he's going to respond to your phone calls within 24 hours. An attorney can guarantee you. So there's always other ways that you can do a guarantee. If your industry has certain requirements that don't allow you to offer a guarantee, you can always offer a promise, right? Promise we're going to do this and this and this. And it just really helps set you apart from your competitor. And it removes that, that doubt from the buyer's mind, which brings me to another quick topic. When you know what your prospect's main objections are, Okay. You have to do what I coined as objection prevention. And you have to find ways to incorporate objection prevention into your presentation or into your sales talk. Right? What I mean by that, if I know that a big part of my prospects will object that, well, isn't, isn't this going to make... So, for example, when we create marketing campaigns for our clients, one of the things that we like to do is we like to incorporate a promotional item into that overall campaign. It's just kind of like a little hook to the item, a little creativity that ties the whole thing in. And a lot of people say, well, well wouldn't adding that promotional item make my um, marketing campaign more expensive? Right? And so I would come up with my presentation. I would say something like this. So I know in the past, I've, I've worked with small business owners for 18 years now, and I've heard quite a few of them tell me, Rob, well, isn't this going to make my marketing more expensive? And I'll give you a scenario where my friend George from um, Larry Jacob, he had the same hesitation. And once I showed George the numbers, once we did a campaign for George, George realizes that, hey, yeah, I spent an extra $1,000, but I generated $10,000, right? So what I've done there 
is I have found a way to remove the objection from your mind before you bring up the objection. Because once you bring up the objection, anything I say at that point is rebuttaling me, right? They expect you to say whatever you gotta say to rebuttal their objection. But if we can prevent them from ever addressing the objection, if we can remove that objection from their mind beforehand, and I know what my five are, and in my website, in my sales copy, in the majority of marketing I do, I try to overcome what those main five objections are using promotional ideas. And the prospect never even gets to that. The objection is eliminated, removed from their mind before they even ever even brought it up. And doing a presentation like this is the perfect time to throw in your objection prevention. Because once you get to the close, you've removed all the objections from their mind. And in a scenario like a webinar or a presentation live from the stage, you don't usually take questions. When you're doing one-on-one -on -one selling, the prospect may say, yeah, well, Rob, what about this, what about that? It's even more important in a webinar where they don't necessarily get to ask all of these questions that you remove those objections before they get to it. Um, number 23, now we're starting to get into, into what we call in marketing value stack. And this is when you what you'll see in a lot of webinars, a lot of sales presentations, where the seller is now going to say, plus, I'm going to give you this bonus and this bonus and this bonus and this bonus, right? We want to stack the value to make this offer irresistible. We want to create and present an irresistible offer. And then the fast action bonuses are very, 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 very important, particularly when you're selling live from the stage, because it's no different than when you go to a wedding and you got the bartender and he'll take five bucks out of his own pocket and put it in a little tip jar on his bar, right? That's what he's doing to get the tips going. That's what's gonna make me realize, oh, I should probably put a tip in here, right? So the fast action bonus, when you're doing a webinar, particularly when you're doing live speaking, is what gets the momentum going. When you say the first two people to go to the back of the room are also gonna get this bonus, that first person, that second person standing up and going to the back of the room, they are the $5 bill in that tip jar. They're what's gonna make everybody else start to get up and go to the back of the room to buy your product or service. So that fast action bonus is very important because it's what triggers that buying frenzy. So on a Number webinar, four, how would you get them to do that? Because you wouldn't know that someone else is buying it. it. Would you say, hey, by the way, someone's asking a question. Oh, it looks like they're interested in buying. I mean, how? What techniques yeah, do you that's what I, and, and you, I still do them in the webinars, and, and, and I've been on multiple webinars where they'll offer the fast action bonus, and I don't really know how true that scarcity is. Like, I don't know if you're offering the fast action bonus to two people. I don't know if 10 people take the link at all 10 gets oh, okay. the bonus. Okay, so, so, you're, right. so by fast action, you're just saying, hey, we've only got... Like, for example, in my space, I can only take on so much web work at one time, and I've done this where I'm saying, look, I can only offer this to the first five people that ask for it because you know my team is only so big and I don't want to overpromise and then I can't deliver it on time. Um, right. And uh, so again, you want to be authentic, but the whole point is to add some sort of scarcity component um, so that you're kind of getting people to jumpstart. Right, 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 right. A, we'll, we'll procrastinate. So in order to start that buying frenzy, we have to give them a reason to not procrastinate, not put this off till Monday, not think about it till later. And we do that with the fast action bonus. And, and you have to be authentic about it, right? You can't, like what you said, is genuine. My team and I can only help, we can only give this bonus to this amount of people because we, there's only so many of us, right? Um, the thing not to do is have false scarcity because once people realize that you're full of it, none of this will work. You'll, you'll ruin your credibility. If you sell, especially if you're speaking live at the front of the room, and I, and I went through this with a friend of mine who's a dentist, and we went to one of Dan Kennedy's super conferences, and he wanted to buy this program. And he was hesitant, and he kept telling me, you know, I'll, I'll just order it later. They'll probably get the bonus survey. They'll get the bonus survey. Now, I've been around... GKIC and Dan Kennedy long enough to know that those guys do not do false scarcity. Those guys say it's going to be five, it's going to be five. Now, there are plenty of other marketers out there that will tell you the first five and they, they give it to everybody. And I was telling my friend Renee, I was like, I don't know, man, you might want to take it now because from what I, and that's exactly what happened. He called me Monday after the thing and he says, man, Deepa, you were right. I tried to buy the course and they're no longer giving me the bonus. It was only that day. I said, right, you know? So, 
Stick to your scarcity. Don't do false scarcity. Don't BS people, man. Just be authentic. Be genuine. Do what you say you're gonna do, and 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 your credibility will shoot up, and you and you will continue to make even more sales by sticking to your word and not BSing people. Then number twenty-six is gonna be that call to action. Right? This is this is the moment. This is the whole reason we put on this webinar. This is the whole reason we're on the in the front of the room on the stage speaking. It's now it's that call to action, right? And it's specific. It's very clear call to action. It's not, you know, buy this now and you have some time when you go back up to your hotel room and think about it. No, it's it's go now to the back of the room. It's click the link right now and go to the sales page and order your course, order your program, order your service, right? I'll tell you the most powerful presentation that I have ever seen in a, in a closing scenario was a, a, a gentleman named Bill Walsh. And he's America's small business expert. I've hosted some local events where I bring Bill down to speak. And he is just amazing. He's amazing at this. And the way he does this, and the first time I saw him do this, I was like, this guy is a genius, right? So he gives these, he offers as his fast action bonus, these 10 free tickets to attend his Rainmaker Summit, which is a $2,000 weekend conference. And he'll say, I have the 10 tickets right here. He pulls them out of his jacket pocket. And he says, who would like them? A bunch of people are raising their hand. I'm looking around the room. And I think no, normally a speaker might tell someone, OK, go to the back of the room, or he might have some person in the audience walk over to them and hand them their ticket. This is what Bill lost. He found the first guy who put his hand up. Actually, you know him, you know him Jamie, Jamie Paredes, Jaime. Jaime put his hand up, a couple other people put his hand up, and then he goes, you want one? And Jaime's like, yeah, yeah, I want one. He goes, come on, come up here and get it, come up here and get it. He, Jamie goes to the front of the room to get the ticket, and then Jamie goes to walk away, and he says, no, hold on, hold on, who else wants one? Come on, you want one, come up here, come up here. And he gets 10 people to rush to the front of the room, now, they're all standing at the front of the room, which creates an enormous amount of social proof, creates an enormous amount of scarcity for everybody else that is contemplating, should I get one or not? And then, once he gives them this ticket, he doesn't just send them off to their seats. He gives them all the tickets. He's also a photographer. Come take a picture. Come take a picture, because these are the guys that are going to make it. These are the guys that took action. The first one's up here to get the bonus. And then he grabbed Jamie, and he goes, go, go. My team is back there waiting for you. My team. And he goes like this, and he's moving Jamie towards the team. And when I look to the back of the room, they got the order forms ready, and they're, they're going like this to Jamie. And I look at Jamie, and I was like, well, you're done. You're, you're, you're dropping 2,500 bucks at this guy's course right now. Yeah. So, right? Now, is that manipulating people? In a way, yes. Is it unethical? No, he wasn't playing into their desires, their dreams, or ambitions, none of that. He was offering them something, and he just had them go through the funnel, or through the steps of that free gift, in a very different way that got a lot of people in the room to respond to that call to action. So don't be timid with your call to action. Use, use, use the power of social proof, scarcity, psychology, reinforce your bonuses, reinforce your guarantee, and then have no hesitation in sending them to click the link or to come up to the front of the room to buy that product or service. And then you do another quick recap in between there. You again recap the value. Now, when you do the value stacking, please, 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 don't use these exaggerated, overinflated numbers. Okay? Stick to realistic numbers. People are paying attention. I might not be adding it up to the penny, but if you tell me that I'm going to include, um, for example, I do copywriting critiques. Right? You write your own sales letter. You write your 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 um, your webinar presentation. You want to send it over to me to do a quick critique. I charge you a small fee, I do the critique. If I offer someone a bonus saying, the first five people to sign up for this product or service, I'm going to give you a copywriting critique bonus valued at $2,000, they're going to be like, that's bullshit. <laughs> I can pay $2,000 to have someone write an entire sales letter for me, let alone just have you critique it. So, you know, make it real numbers. Make it, you know, this is a $500 bag. Don't, don't, don't overinflate things, right? And I know we're probably going over time here, but I'm going to give you guys one more quick tip on how to price things. See, so when you're gonna sell your product, you wanna round down. And I did an entire episode on the power of how our brain does left number justifying, and our, our brain will look at something that says 497, and our brain will look at the four and take a shortcut in order to process information efficiently. 
our brains create shortcuts. And it'll look at the four and it will focus on that and, and it'll it won't round up and say this is five hundred dollars, right? Now, there are a lot of reasons why the brain will pick up on it, but for the most part, price it at four ninety seven because they're gonna look at it as it's four hundred, not five hundred. Now, when you're gonna do value stack, when you're offering bonuses, you don't want that psychology. You don't want to round down the value of your bonus. So in a selling situation, I would say this product, 497. In a bonus situation, I would say this bonus valued at 500, right? Simple little uh, nuance that creates a different psychological hey, reaction. Hey, Robert, Robert, let me tell you, this has been priceless. Um, we're, I'm going to have to cut this up when I publish it into two episodes because it's gone that long, but you've really covered you know, the essentials of a webinar, of a long copy sales letter, of a stage presentation. You've done a great job. I mean, clearly Thank you're you. you're the guy who's um, got the know-how in this space, huh? Well, I mean, I've been 18 years as a self-diagnosed marketing junkie. And I just, I love this stuff. Great, I really great. So, so Robert, if people want to get a hold of you, how, how should they reach you? Okay, well, they can send me a quick email. It's rob at outrageouspromotions.com. And then I have a couple of resources that I can kind of drive them over to. If you're interested in getting your hands on the ebook on writing guarantees for your business and taking those guarantees and incorporating them into your webinar and into your sales presentations, you can go to marketingthatkicksass.com. Just put your name and email and it will shoot you over the ebook on guarantees. If you want a resource for headlines, because the headline is like, it's marketing 101. It's like the most, most critical part of your marketing has to be the headline. Why? Because the headline identifies who this is for. If you want to get your hands on that, I got an ebook called, um, what's it called? Uh, it's something about how to write kick-ass headlines or something well, like I'll that. I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll make sure, send those to me in an email and I'll make sure that when we publish this, I'll include those links and that way people can get your resources and, uh, yep, and yep. reach you. Um, so, um, gosh, Rob, you've, you've more than covered things. Uh, thank you so much. Um, you know, and, um, I'll, I'll be dropping by your office sometime soon so we can chat some more. All right, George, that was a whole lot of fun and, um, look forward to the next one. Okay. Take care.